Hello, my name is Dr. Vinka Schuster, and I'm a pediatric resident in Asuta Ashdod Hospital in Israel. I would like to present to you on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Melzen and others from Lumit Health Services, the highlights of our study regarding clinical outcomes and diabetes control in patients with ADHD and type 1 diabetes mellitus. Type 1 diabetes is a very common diagnosis with prevalence of almost two cases per 1,000 teenagers in the U.S. It requires constant attention to glucose monitoring, carbohydrate counting, proper insulin injection, and exercise. Low adherence leads to immediate and long-term complications in these patients. 7% of children and adolescents are diagnosed with ADHD, and ADHD is associated with higher morbidity and mortality and with poor general health status. Literature about type 1 diabetes control in patients with ADHD is scarce. The objective of our research was to assess the interactions between ADHD and type 1 diabetes, including diabetes outcome and general health status of the patients. We conducted a cross-sectional study and collected primary care and hospital records of patients aged 5 to 18 years old with diabetes using the Lumit Health Services database. Among them, the ADHD group included patients with ADHD diagnosis who purchased at least three prescriptions of psychostimulants and nootropics. Parameters, including demographic, clinical, and laboratory data, were collected and assessed. The diabetes control and general health of patients with diabetes and ADHD were compared with patients with diabetes alone. Overall, 230 diabetes patients were included in the analysis. Of them, 24 had ADHD. Approximately 50% of both groups were male, and the mean age was around 13 years. Higher socioeconomic levels were observed in the ADHD group, with 62% of patients in a medium-high socioeconomic level. Glycemic control was significantly unfavorable among patients with ADHD, with average hemoglobin A1c levels of 9.9 .9 compared with 8.1 in the non-ADHD group. 83% of patients with ADHD had uncontrolled diabetes, with hemoglobin A1c levels of 9 and higher. The ADHD group had higher rates of insulin pump therapy cessation, while in both the groups 60% of patients initiated the gold standard therapy of an insulin pump, one-third of the ADHD group discontinued this treatment. The ADHD group had significantly higher emergency room department admission rates, higher hospitalization rates, and longer hospitalization duration. The total annual healthcare provider costs per patient were almost twice as high among the ADHD group. In multivariate analysis, these unfavorable outcomes for the ADHD patient group were preserved. In this study, having ADHD and type 1 diabetes comorbidity was associated with a higher complication rates and poorer diabetes control in comparison to patients with type 1 diabetes alone. Although further research is needed, our data suggests that this group requires special care and attention of the medical staff.